to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And not to faint. In Acts chapter 12, when we read from verse 5 to 11, this was the story of um, Apostle Peter when he was caught in prison. Please give us from verse 5. The Bible says that now Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made how long? Please help me. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season. Prayer was not just made without season because Peter was caught. It was the culture of the early church to always be in prayer. Prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Are you seeing it now? I told you that the, the, the intervention means that the trouble is never allowed to manifest. The next day he was to be beheaded. And the Bible says that same night, while Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door of the prison, seven. It says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in prison. And he smote Peter on the right side and raised him up, saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hand. Notice, every time he shows up like this, chains fall. The same thing happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. So he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee. And he followed me. Verse 9. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true what was done by the angel, but thought he was in a vision. Verse 10. It says, and they were past the first and the second word, and they came to the iron gate that leaded unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Massive intervention on the strength of prayer. You do not know how cheap Satan is until you master the art of consistent prayer consistent prayer because you see in the realm of the spirit the bible lets us know that the prayer of the saints are held in vials according to revelations that when the there is like a prayer bank in the realm of the spirit that is able to go into the future of the saints prayer in vials lifted before the lord and stored for the times when they will be needed in the life of believers Many believers do not pray, I submit to you. They pray when they come to church and they are led by a man of God to pray. They have left the prayer ministry for men of God. And the moment you seem to be a bit serious with your prayer life, society makes you feel guilty. Say, are you a pastor? Where are you going with this thing? It's a very dangerous deception by hell, especially at the times that we live now. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. When Jesus was God, he never prayed. But when Jesus became a man, he prayed all through. Because all men pray to survive. They don't just pray to be victorious. Are we together? You can only fight the attacks you know, and you have seen, and you have perceived. But there is more just like the man of God shared when he was on stage here. Let me tell you something. If an average believer understands the schemings of hell per 24 hours over your destiny, you will never, never miss prayer again. It is the one that manifests that you see, that you know. 
Do you know, I, I read the book, I read the book of Job. And the Bible says Job offered sacrifices for his children. But we do not see Job consistently as a man of prayer. I saw sacrifice, but I did not see prayer. I guarantee you, if Job was a man of prayer, the tragedy that happened would not be allowed to happen. If the devil wants to attack you, the system is first, he brings through pride and carelessness and complacency and an arrival mentality. He will allow your prayer life to go down. He will allow it to go so down and then one day it will be like a dream. He will strike you in a way and a manner that will surprise you. Hallelujah. Consistent prayer. In Acts chapter 16, just write it, we may not read it. When you read from verse 25 to 34, the Bible talks about Paul and Silas who were bound in jail. And every time they caught the believers and put them to jail, the goal was to eventually kill them, not just to store them there. And the Bible says at midnight that Paul and Silas prayed and then they sang praises unto God. It was so loud the prisoners heard them. And then when you read the other verses, they would tell you that suddenly there was a sound that God came, the prison, the bands broke and the jailer was about to kill himself. And he said, no, don't do this. We are on hot. Because they prayed and they praised. You must obtain grace from God. Families must come up with an intentional prayer program. Let me tell you this. If you are not systemic about your prayer life, you will never be consistent. Prayer has nothing to do with emotions. You must come up with a systemic approach to prayer. Maybe for someone, this may be a solution. You've been praying and saying, Lord, why am I up today and down tomorrow? You must come up with a systemic prayer. I personally recommend taking advantage of mornings and nights because for most people, we are workers. And the, the time we can steal out to really focus and concentrate is the mornings and the nights. It doesn't mean you cannot pray uh, any part of the day. But I'm telling you the mornings and the night. There are few times where we see Jesus praying even in the afternoon. His times were before the day broke. You invest time in prayer. Are we together? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Apostle James said, is anyone afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Is anyone among you afflicted? The biblical recommendation is let him pray. Not let him go around discussing with people. Not let him go around attracting sympathy. Let him pray. By the grace of God, I tell you with all humility, I am a product of prayer. I know what prayer does to the gates of darkness when the saints are serious about it. Show me what is refusing to work. Show me the door that is refusing to open. I like you to stay and pray, and you watch the wonder working power of prayer. It was Bishop Oedebo that said, No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. He can hold your trouser, and people say, Yeah, he's mad, just forgive him. But he will never enter fire and say, I am mad. Do you know the Bible says, When a spirit leaves a man, that that spirit goes through desert places. Nobody is there to cast that spirit out of the desert. And yet the spirit leaves the desert and, and prefers the body of that man than the desert. And I, I, I studied it and I said, why do they hate deserts? I found out is the heat. Desert is a hot place. And the fire that burns there will make the demons prefer a cold human body than a desert without anybody to cast him. So when your life becomes like that desert, the spirits by themselves will be compelled to relocate. There is, there is an extent of fire, a requisite level of fire that when a believer carries, I tell you, they project an arrow without your knowing. That arrow will re is a spiritual circumference. When it enters that zone, it, it, re it doesn't just return back to sender. It returns with a message written on it.
You will not have the luxury to react to every satanic assault. So you fortify yourself. A system of auto-reaction by an investment in prayer to the point that even when you are sleeping, your spirit is praying. If you are not a person of prayer, you will not understand what I'm saying. There is a way you can pray. You sleep and you just want to stretch. That stretch of two minutes will become a disaster to hell. Shakas koparatoski batale. Mabrado zesikatali aparatu ziata. Oh, people pray, pray, pray. I beckon on you in the name of Jesus that every spirit that is eating your prayer life is eating your destiny. It takes more than intellect to arrive. It takes more than intellect to be exempted. There are arrows that fly by day. There are noisome pestilences. There are destructions that wait in noonday. We move swimming in an ocean of evil. It takes prayer to keep exempting yourself. Every time you pray, you leave a prophecy in the spirit. I am exempted. My children are exempted. All that concerns me are exempted. There are spirits that are sent on an errand that even them, they know that errand will not happen. Because they wonder why they were sent to certain people. That you can carry a dimension of prayer fire. It's not for preaching, you know. I'm not talking of prayer to prepare sermons. He maketh his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire. You get up, you are walking around many years of the investments of prayer. In, in a shrine, they are conjuring things and they bring your picture. They say for this man and for his family. And while they are praying suddenly, like a mighty rushing wind, they hear a sound from the spirit. You are registering your presence in the realm of the spirit, exempted from evil, exempted from catastrophe. Let me tell you this. There are many times, sometimes I'm about to travel. I live quite a busy schedule. And when I want to travel, people I know who are genuine, men and women and prophets of God, they can send me a text and say, Apostle, are you about to travel? I say, yes. He say, please, don't travel. I just saw a revelation. I saw a ghastly motor accident and I saw you in it. I say, you are right. Except that you, hold on, receive a report from the spirit that was sent. Dominion is the ability to veto the workings of darkness. If I, if, I, if I fear death, I will not bless the body of Christ again. Because the devil does not have a special day to want to kill me. Every day is a day that is a project. When you see men survive, it's, it's, it's not because the devil is not aware of their existence. They have mastered the art of paralyzing him. He told Job, he said, have you not built a hedge around him? Shela parus kadaba. As you are listening to this, there is an impartation of the grace of prayer. For some of you, God is telling you this is why evil is prevailing in your family. There is no one there to stand and administer priesthood. I'm not just talking of five minutes devotional. Thank God for that. I'm not talking of just family prayer that ends up in quarrel. I'm talking of a dedicated time of prayer. Not praying and you are browsing. No. I vow that you will not be promoted in this office. Don't argue with the man. Leave him and his folly. Go back to your secret place. Listen, the ministry of angels are real. But many of us have never experienced it. Read your Bible. Angels walk with prayer. Anywhere you see the angelic, the prayer ministry activated them. You are not a person of prayer. You will know nothing about angels. I hope you are getting blessed. Please do not sit down and fold your arms and allow evil to come and crush you. 
the arsenals of hell are rising like never before. All of a sudden it looks like you are having dreams you don't understand. You are having visions you don't understand. The issue is not just to wait until the day you have an opportunity for counseling. And as you begin to pray, you are investing time in prayer. Show me a weak believer who looks like he's a victim of the vicissitudes of life. Introduce him to the priesthood of prayer. I show you a sign and a wonder. Whilst you're seated in one minute, can you just blast in tongues for one minute? As a sign and a token to your destiny that I am still coming. Men who fire had no power over them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Shepas kubarakato zepashia. Shatakata barakato saprandakatele kata. Shikete bas soprandakato zeziakata. Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Zikesh kalari sahasanda bragadasia katabratis. You mentioned the name of your children. You mentioned your office. You mention your business. You mention your family. Forcefully advancing by the spirit of grace. Forcefully advancing. No arsenal of hell. No arrow of darkness. No prophecy. No divination. No enchantment. No witchcraft. No ordinance in the heavenlies will prevail over me. Will prevail over my destiny. Hallelujah. Let me share with you a story. Many years ago, one time I was praying in the night. And when I was praying in the night, I used to pray behind a wall. And while I was praying, that was my first encounter with a physical demon, not a vision, a demon, like you are seeing somebody. And all of a sudden, I see this being stand. And it said, get back. And I'm watching my God. What is this? Will men believe if I tell them this? Then I just prayed in tongues and that's how it left. You see, I don't share these things because there are, we live in a generation of people who not all men have faith. When people hear these things, they think you're just talking rubbish. In one of the encounters, I was praying, praying in the spirit. All of a sudden, my roof just disappeared and then I see this being like a sea creature it had a tail looking like a dinosaur but the tail also had its own life that means the tail can disconnect and still be alive the eyes were as big as that of a human being and it was looking at me and it spoke and I heard it it says so you think you want to bring God's people into abundance that spirit is what the Bible calls mammon I saw it I know the spirit that keeps people poor. I know the spirit that destroys people. See, there are dimensions in the spirit you cannot access if you don't pray. I, I didn't start having encounters with angels just because I was born again and a child of God. There are frequencies in the spirit you rise to. One day you will hit an escape velocity and you are in a dimension of dominion and power that the earth will respond to. Are we together? Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. They're about to drive people from your place of work. Instead of going around to talk to someone and he says, bring one million, bring two million, I will consider you. No, men ought always to pray. See, let me tell you this. If you believe in God and you believe in the power of prayer, engage it and watch what happens to you. 
Some of you are crying. You are, I'm looking at you because the Holy Spirit is telling you, had you prayed this thing that happened, it's not because God is not mighty. It's because heaven kept asking, who in this family can pray? Evil is about to come, but heaven is ready. Heaven is ready. Who is there to pray? They come in dreams. They come through prophecies. People send text messages, but slumber keeps you. The Bible says, a little, it says, awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. You must obtain grace to kill the spirit of slumber in your life. The hand of God is coming upon this, word, this, this people. I'm seeing it in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing a spirit. I cast that spirit. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are not in ministry when you hold a mic. You are in ministry when you are serious with God and serious with prayer. I have told myself, by the grace of God and with all humility, that there is no mortal man who will meet me and remain the same. It's a covenant with God. It's a covenant that I have with God. That if I pray for you and nothing changes, I will go for a retreat. I'm wasting my time. It means I'm not doing ministry. Listen, I'm not saying this to brag. I want, I want you to be angry this morning. Challenge yourself. That when you come, spirits know you are coming. Spirits know you are coming. When you stand there, there is an effulgence of grace from you. You can fake power, but you can't fake a relationship. You can't fake a track record of a life of prayer and consistency. That before evil arises, prayer has gone forth. Before evil arises, an arsenal in the spirit, there is a bulwark of power protecting, defending. There are forces that want to make every destiny to not rise. There are horns that if left will frustrate the counsel of God. It will take the ministry of prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames. Say after me, in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames. Spirit of laziness, spirit of slumber, I come against you. It was while men slept that the enemy came and planted something. Please sit down. This is a Thanksgiving service. A few minutes and we're done. The next key that provokes divine intervention according to scripture that the saints can access to win battles even before they start is the power of praise. Praise is not just about singing and dancing alone. It's a mysterious instrument for warfare and faith. Psalm 22 and verse 3. Paruse but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. That God makes the praise of men his habitation. Psalm 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. It says so. By using this mystery of prayer and praise, there are weapons, shall I be saved? Keep that scripture, please. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Say, in doing so, shall I be saved from my enemies? That when they encompass me, 
and they say, where is his God? I will engage the mystery of prayer. And after prayer, I will praise the God who is worthy to be praised. It says that when I do this, that so shall I be saved from my enemies. Judges chapter 1 and verse 2. Judges chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's hurry up. They were about to go for battle and they inquired of the Lord. What tribe should go first and lead in battle so that we can win? And the Lord said, Judah. Judah means praise. It says, Judah shall go up. Behold, in praise, I have delivered the land to his hands. There is, there is something mysterious about praise that is called perfected praise. Praise that comes from the, the depth of a man's heart. Like your pastor shared for the things that he has done, for the things that he is doing, and that which he will do. Praise is powerful. It was Kenneth Copeland that asked Bishop David Oyedepo. He said, you claim we are the ones who taught you faith, but how have these people to church? I danced every one of them in praise alone. Let me tell you this. This thing you call a dance is a mysterious spiritual weapon. Listen, please listen. Praising God with it. Dance is a mystery that only traditional people understand. That they invoke, there is a reason why every tradition has preserved dancing through decades. It is not just about shaking your body. There is a deep mystery in a dance. Hallelujah. Yes. That when the ark of the Lord was taken back to Jerusalem, David escorted it in a dance and with praise. And Saul's daughter saw him and said, you are too dignified. You are insulting the pedigree of your office. And he said, I am dancing before the Lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. And God had it and she died barren. Please listen to me. If you master the art of praise, thank God for the one you do corporately in church. But go back, lock yourself. Write all your prayer requests. Write all the mockery. Write all the shame. Are you together now? And dance it before the God of heaven. If you can't sing, get Igbo high praise. Oh yes. Oh yes. And you play it and dance before the Lord like a madman. It's none of your business whether you can dance or not. It's not a competition. This is warfare. Are we together? That you rejoice and celebrate his majesty. You will watch battles that you don't need to fight. It's when the victory is won, God will say you were supposed to fight this. The mystery of intervention. I have seen this mystery change impossible situations in the lives of people. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. People who had no business having jobs. People who did not apply and when the names came out, their names were there with no application. Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Verse 6. It says, then shall the earth, that means the earth has been instructed to, in, to yield its increase only at the instance of praise. Now, the earth is a universal point of contact. Everything makes contact with the earth. Your destiny helper makes contact with the earth. The person who will give you breakthrough makes contact with the earth. The person who will lift you makes contact with the earth. So when the Bible says the earth should yield her increase, 
This earth you see is a universal point of contact. Everything that lives touches the earth. The Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. You can dance your way with honor. And while you are doing so, God will wake someone and say, remember I told you to keep two million naira that you will bless some people. Now, this, just bless this brother with it and let him pay his rent. And the person does not know you. You just get a text, send me your account. You think they are scammers until you see their lot. And God says, I'm not endorsing laziness, but I am showing you that I am the God of all flesh. And that in praise, the Bible says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. There are dimensions of God you will only see in praises. Hallelujah. So while you were dancing and you were celebrating, it was not just a church celebration. I tell you sincerely, you are provoking something in the realm of the spirit. Fearful in praises. Go back home today. Don't just stop here. Go back home. Find a room. Find somewhere. Just place some worship and praise and dance before God. And someone says, ah, did you get an alert? You say, no, 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 no. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. And while you are dancing, you are celebrating. Five minutes will turn to ten minutes. Ten minutes to fifteen. 15 minutes, 15 minutes to 20 minutes, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, all of a sudden you start getting text messages. Someone you had been trying to pursue by yourself for five years suddenly says, where are you? I don't know why you are coming to my mind. Now you know. The Bible says, for we know. They don't know, but we know. Are we together? Fearful in praises. Number three. The third key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is the power of sacrifice. Write it down. The power of sacrifice. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6. Sacrifice is a mystery in the kingdom that God never ignores. That people can change the tides of things against them. There have been times in the Bible when it was obvious to certain kings that they were going to defeat them and take their nations. The Bible says they carried their own children and slew them. And when they slew their children and indignation rose before God and the battles were overturned. My Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. 3. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in, they that sow in, there are certain seeds you don't laugh when you are sowing it. When you are giving Ishmael, you laugh. But when it is truly Isaac, you will know that this one, please keep that scripture there. Hmm. They that sow in tears shall reap not with joy, in joy. And then the Bible says, verse 6, that, please give us verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Why? Because he's bearing precious seeds. He says, without a doubt, he will come again rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Believers, let me tell you this. Sadly, every time preachers teach about sacrifice most times we think that it's just about money and giving money and emptying accounts and so on and so forth the real idea of sacrifice is using the principle of resurrection to change the circumstances in your life let me share with you a mystery god taught me and that would be the end for this session according to scripture 
the Bible says this heaven and this earth shall pass away. Is that true? That a new heaven and a new earth can come again. Now, Paul teaching on the seed taught a mystery. And he said that this seed in the kingdom, you don't only reap what you sow, but there is something you can do to your seed that at resurrection, it will carry another body. That God is able to give your seed another body. Is that correct? And according to scripture, the Bible says when a seed is sown, it dies. Do we agree? It dies and then it comes back to life. That means any season I do not want to see in my life, I can tie that season to a seed. And if I plant that seed, provided that seed dies, that season must also die with it. I show you how to end seasons in your life. That I see a season and I'm tired of that season. I can bring that season to end by using the principle of death and resurrection. I tie that season of delay. I tie that season of pain. I tie that season of disappointment to a seed. The moment that seed dies, I start rejoicing. It's impossible for that season to still be alive when your seed has died. And then when resurrection starts, it comes with another season. Another season in your life. Or a Robert, before he died, one time he was diagnosed of an incurable disease. And the doctor told him, Oral, please prepare. You may not be able to survive this. You may not leave. And he said, why? He said, we're sorry, we've done our best. And he called his wife. He said, how much do we have in this account, that account, called his staff? And he said, go and empty it as a sacrifice. The moment that sacrifice went, mysteriously his system began to change. You see, I've taught this. You see why it's dangerous to steal money in church? Because you don't know what season who is trying to kill. If you stop that season from dying, you will continue that season in your own life. Are you getting this now? Yes. Because seeds should die. And if you come and carry ten naira, someone has tied his delay, tied his barrenness, tied his witchcraft on that seed. And you carry it and put it in your pocket. It's not money you put in your pocket. You authorize those seasons and say, I have the power to handle you. Come to me. Because it's only the one who changes seasons that should deal with those seeds. Show me any season that you do not like in your life. I can show you how to change it. That if God can grant you grace with understanding and you take a sacrifice, I have torn seasons in my life overnight by the power of seeds. Hallelujah. I remember many years ago, I was in Port Harcourt. I was tired of a season in my life. And the Lord gave me an instruction. It was during a conference. And he said to carry everything I had. When I say everything, I mean everything. They didn't have much. I put everything in a bag and dragged it like a coffin to the church. Unfortunately, I went late and I sat at the overflow. And when people were dancing to come and give their seats, people were giving land, people were giving a lot of things, the Holy Ghost decided to disgrace me. He said, you wait till everybody is done, then you will come. And I had to obey. True story. As soon as everyone was done giving, he said, now you can go. I held my bag. This was my, it was a real Isaac. I dragged everything to the altar in the presence of everyone. When I dropped everything, something inside me fell with it. I knew that this was Isaac. I went back to my seat and I sat down. And the Holy Ghost spoke a few words to me. I will never forget what happened to me. The next day, 6.10 in the morning, someone calls me and says, Are you Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, send me your account number. I said, who are you? He said, that's not the issue. Just send me your account number. And he sent something to me that, except you are not godly, you must praise God when you see that kind of thing. And from that time, God began to do things in my life. 
Seasons can change by the power of sacrifice. Are we together? Sacrifice. Sacrifice is not just giving. Checking your pocket and carrying money and dropping. No. Sacrifice is an intentional. It is not the money. It is the understanding and the sacrifice that backs that money. You can drop money and it was just donation. Sacrifice. In 1 Kings 17, when you read from verse 6, I believe, the story of Elijah and the widow in Zarephath. The Bible says that Elijah came after the ravens brought bread and all of that. When you go to verse 7, that he came to a woman in Zarephath and he told her she was trying to pack her wood. And he said, Madam, bring me a cup of water. Respectfully, she was bringing it to honor the man of God. He said, while you are coming, please make me some bread. I'm hungry. And she said, sir, sincerely, I'm about to eat the last one so that I and my son will die. And he said, surely that will not happen. He said, you just bring it and let me eat. And when he brought it, he prophesied to her. She lived off that until the famine was over. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather unto me my saints. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You can ask your pastor. You can ask every man of God that I know. There is nobody I know who is thriving in a position of honor and grace. That sacrifice did not take them there. Once upon a time, Archbishop Benson Idahosa was entering a plane. And there was an issue in the plane and there was need for a seat. And, you know, nobody was willing to excuse and do all of this. And a particular businessman got up to honor him. And he said, because you have honored me, he prophesied to him. The name of that businessman is Aliko Dangote. There are stories behind the glories of men. And today it can be an opportunity for you to seal this praise service with an understanding of sacrifice. That you can change seasons and you can introduce newer seasons into your life with power, with understanding. I once had a story as I round up of a couple. This is a true story. This couple came to church and I think the church at that time was having a project and they wanted to zinc the church. And they were also having their own, they had their own house and then they were trying to build another, I think, or so for rentals. And they decided as a couple, they said, we are going to do something that is really crazy. They said, we are going to carry this money and we are going to take it to the church and we'll sow it there. And they took that seed crying and when they dropped that seed, they returned back home. And according to the man, he said, the Lord told them that you will never have to build a house by yourself in your life again because of this that you have done. The time that man was talking, without exaggeration, he had 21 properties. None built by himself. These are the kinds of teachings where it becomes difficult to not teach without a testimony. But then it also becomes difficult to share your own testimony. Because at that point, when, when you do it now, it will, be, it will become like it is pride. And then because we seek to project Jesus and him alone. I can share with you testimonies. Your pastors can share with you testimonies of what sacrifice can do. So don't think this is some jamboree to just manipulate anybody who sincerely loves you and wants you to be exempted from evil, from poverty, from pain, will tell you this. Today, by the grace of God and with all humility, I've had the opportunity to meet people who I do not know, who come together as a business and say, we came and agreed that we'll make you a non-executive board member in our company. Who are you? What do you do? They say, no. You, your own is just to bring the presence of God in our business. 
Don't, don't, please don't think men of God are daft. Well, you know, people have a way of believing that all we do is just preach. We don't know anything at all about finance, about life. It's not so. It's not so. Hallelujah. That it is possible to step into prepared blessings. There are times God will give you seeds to sow. But there are times the urgency will require bread coming directly from heaven. He can do both. He can give you seed to sow. And he can send manna from heaven for you. Some of us, the urgency in our lives right now does not require seeds to sow. You need bread coming from heaven to cater for your needs. Hallelujah. The power of consistent prayer. The power of a grateful heart expressed in praise. Praise with a dance. Praise with a dance, with understanding. And then the power of sacrifice. That you lay something down that shakes the gate of hell. And you say, Lord, by this seed, I am prepared to change seasons. By this seed, I am prepared to move to higher dimensions of the anointing. Years ago, I took a seat to go and honor a man of God. And when I went to honor that man of God, he looked at me and he said, kneel down. And he says, Father, put him in a position where only him can solve that problem. I thought it was a selfish prayer. I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm all for the body of Christ. I like everybody rising together. And I could sense him feeling that is your business. I'm praying a prayer for you. Now I understand what he was saying. That wherefore... God had, uh, what, what was, was the, highly exalted him and given him a name that is above. It's not a name that is below. A name that is above. Your name can be below, but there is a name that is above. That when the name is mentioned, there is a reaction in this kingdom. Hallelujah. My life is a testament of sacrifices. I tell you sincerely under God. I believe it is so with your pastor. The only person left is you. Life will remain at a natural phase for you till you accelerate your rising through the power of intentional sacrifice. You may not have money to give. One day wake up in the morning and plead with your pastor and say, Sir, I don't have money to give, but I am here today to iron your clothes. I will iron your clothes and wash your car with understanding. That is sacrifice. As you are washing that car, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm tired of trekking. I'm tired of walking around like a fool. I'm tired of stagnation. When they kick a car, it moves obediently. My destiny should also move. And while you are washing that car, and you are washing those clothes, and the Lord says, so this is what you are doing to honor me. Since you cannot see me, you are honoring my servant. Step into the next level. This I'm telling you is a very powerful mystery. Very powerful mystery. Recently, a, a great man of God, a, a great friend of mine, he went to go and sow a seed into the life of God's servant, um, Baba Deboe. And when he went there, he told him, he said, lie flat on the ground on my carpet. And when he lay flat on the ground, he began to speak to him from the bowels of his spirit. When I saw it, I said, this man, see, there is a way that people speak. You know they are just blessing you so you will go. But there is a way they are standing in their office with the throne that backs them activated and they utter words from their spirit. It will rattle systems and structures till it shifts your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never start my year. There are specific sacrifices to specific people. Let me tell you the truth. You see, we say these things because we want you to understand that it's not just, you know, we have a way of thinking people are just lucky. God is just helping them. It's not true. Many of you, by the grace of God, have had a choice servant of God seated in your midst week after week, month after month, but you have not had the discernment to say, who is this man? And what great, when I saw your property, the extension there, I was talking to your pastor, I said, I thought this was the end of it. 
when I saw it, I said, my God, this has to be grace here. And yet for, for a long time, you are looking for a property that you can have the discernment to carry a sacrifice and come and kneel before pastor and his wife to say, sir, I discern that you are a carrier of grace that brings dominion at a territorial level. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will activate something in my life. It does not matter whether it's done in secret or it's done in the open. <sighs> Doors just open like that. Are we together? Yes. This is the mystery by which men, ordinary men, rise to supernatural dimensions of grace with the mighty hand and the power of God. Sacrifice is powerful. I live in it. It's not something that maybe you do once in a while. Please hear me. If you want to change seasons and you want to take shame out of your life, let sacrifice be like a shadow to you. Those who are not of this kingdom will call it foolishness. They will even call it manipulation of members. And as I've always observed, I know that there are places and there are people where there are all kinds of things. By the grace of God, your church and this place and this conference is a place of truth and integrity. And I tell you sincerely, you can turn seasons around. I had the privilege of talking with one of the group general managers of a bank in this nation and I prophesied to him that I saw trouble coming to your bank, mister. And here is my advice for you. Get a sacrifice and take it to a man of God as God will reveal to you. And watch what happens. And with childlike foolishness, he carried that sacrifice. And the last time we spoke, it was a wonder what God had done in his bank. This is not something that is just spiritual. It has monetary implication. It has destiny implication. Hallelujah. Yes. The power of sacrifice. Mama, I don't know what grace was on you. You didn't go to school, but you raised 11 children by frying akara. It's not about akara. There was a grace. I carried this sacrifice with my big manism and my masters and doctors. Let something come upon my life. Whatever made you to feed 11 children and none of us, you were giving people rice who went to school. When you see supernatural results and consistent results, it's no more scientific. Listen, it is what is on you that controls what is around you. Everything around you is a report card. It's an attestation. It's showing us what is on you. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I came from a region that did not have so many successful people. I saw people become mediocres. I hardly saw ministries rise from that point to a global scale. And I said, no, this I have to exempt my see. There is there is a holy anger. There is an anger that comes upon you that you say in the name of Jesus, seed, go for me. I, I send you like a weapon. Enter my tomorrow. Scatter what is not of God. Scatter altars and ensure that I do not see shame. Hallelujah. It's true. It's true. I went for a conference, a PFN conference in Adamawa some years ago. And the man who drove me was a doctor. He's a lecturer in the university there. But he had been barren for a long time. And he said, please allow me drive apostle. This was a distinguished person in the academia. And while he, he never spoke to me about it. And on the final day, I now looked at him and said, why am I hearing the cry of a baby? And he said, thank God. I said, I'm hearing the cry of a baby because the Lord is telling me that you have been barren. Your wife has been barren. He started crying. Today, as I speak to you, I don't even know how many children he has. <laughs> Exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice. Exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice. Husband, no job. Wife, no job. Children, no job. No way. You carry a seed and you take it before the Lord and say, if God be God, 
let fire fall from heaven and take away this shame. Let me tell you, many people are not yet tired of shame. That's why sacrifice looks too heavy. When you see the implication of shame in your life and your destiny and reproach, we are going to pray. This is a thanksgiving service. But God wants to perfect this in our lives. And it will happen through the power of sacrifice. I tell you sincerely, there are many of you here, as I'm talking to you, the Spirit of God is speaking to you. And saying, this is the step that you need to push. I'm not talking of giving, for God's sake, like you just carry money and come and drop emotionally. No. This is a calculated, intentional, it's, it's, it's coming from the bowels of pain. I'm tired of a season in my life, oh God. I am tired of always begging and looking for things. I am tired of always being stranded somewhere on the way. And you provoke seasons and you watch the hand of the mighty one move and shift things in your life. I'm going to pray for you tonight. But as we round up this conference, I have not made this discussion with your pastor and respectfully speaking. I don't know what God is going to tell you. Now, I know that this is not something that I'm speaking by the Spirit and I apologize. I hope I do not break any protocol. Listen to me. I want you by the Spirit of God to stand with God in prayer and say, Lord, speak to me. What seed as a sacrifice will I bring not to the church, not to the church, to this vessel of yours and his wife? There is a grace. They are the spiritual coverings over this place. I sense in my spirit that God wants to shift people into seasons. I know you can come and drop offering for church. I'm talking of the grace, tapping into the grace of God upon this man. That there are sacrifices that God is going to speak to you in this season. He will speak to you as a family. He will speak to you as a company. See, except God is not God, that you heed to this that I'm saying, you will testify in tears on this stage at the way God will shift you through seasons. It is true. Hallelujah. This is what I do. This is what I live by. It's not theory. It's true. That you can wave certain seasons goodbye and they will wave you back. Authorized to leave you. Certain dimensions of shame live your life forever till Jesus comes. Please rise up on your feet. have just two three minutes in one minute I'd like you to talk to the Lord father I have given you thanks for all that you have done in my life but I'm ready to shift seasons don't just pray for things pray for seasons I sense in my spirit that we are in an encounter this morning to shift seasons not just to bring more things not just to bring new things but to shift entire seasons in our lives from seasons of spiritual bankruptcy to seasons of spiritual buoyancy, seasons of lack and wants, to seasons of blessings and abundance, seasons of mediocrity and obscurity, to seasons of notoriety and honor. Are you praying? Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Exempt me from evil, oh God. Exempt me from disaster. I'm tired of shame, tired of reproach. Tired of shame, tired of reproach. Tired of the mockery of men. Let no man ask, where is my God again? Put a testimony. He said he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise in my heart. Many will see it and fear and put their trust in him. Someone who is angry with this current level, like a woman about to give birth, are you praying? Father, in the name of Jesus, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. I'm tired of this season. In the name of Jesus, I have given you thanks and praise for this level for all that you have done 
from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Now is the time to change, to shift to a new dimension. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. I want to pray for you finally and then I'm off the stage. I don't know what it is that God is going to speak to you on. I will pray for the grace for prayer. And I've taught you the mystery of praise. Your pastor is a master at understanding that and he so demonstrated it with his life upstage. But the part that concerns me right now is the area of sacrifice. And you don't have to do it, you don't have to be coerced. But that there are people here by the spirit of the living God. That the Lord, am, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I fine sir? There are people here that the Lord is speaking to you. That you are in a strange season of a sacrifice. Or a season that demands a sacrifice. This is not for everybody. You will not go to hell if you don't come out. But I know that there are people God is speaking to. I'm not going to mention any amount, but this is a sacrifice you want to change seasons in your life. I want you to leave your seat. Please don't come out and stand here and then not obey God. There is no point doing that. You sit back. Don't feel bad at all. I'm going to pray for everybody. I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God has told me. Please, I'd like you to come and stand here quickly in prayer. Mean what you are saying. Mean what you are saying. Mean what you are saying. Don't, this is not an emotional thing. Please, let it be from the depth of your heart. Please give me a bit of volume. It's time for seasons to change. Please don't just stand looking at me. Pray in one minute. Father, I'm standing here because seasons must change. And I must testify. Seasons must change. Financial seasons. Spiritual seasons. By the power of the Holy Ghost. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Please make space for them. Please make space for them. Can we make space for them? Just if you need to shift a little. You will watch the wonder walking power of Jehovah over your life. We end seasons through sacrifice and we birth new seasons through sacrifice. Those of you here, you can shift forward a bit so that you make room for more people. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. This is a move. We need a move. This is a move. Shela baradu zaziye katabaladaba. Please look at me. I'm going to politely invite your pastor and your prophet to join me. There's such, such hunger to speak over the life of the people. Please hear me. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I assure you by the God of heaven that if it is this God we serve, and it is not, if, if I stand here to deceive you and that I'm teaching you cunningly devised fables, may a curse rest upon me and my generation and my children's children. But if this is the integrity of God's word, then I assure you, if God be God, know that this, the last season you came to this church with is the last season you are seeing in your life forever. Some of you, what you are doing now, is your children that will eat from it and your children's children they will ask you one day 
and say, how did we come into this? Because I look at the past and it does not look like what should be. And you tell them, I, I initiated a process of transgenerational relevance through the power of sacrifice. The day I did mine, I cried. Let me tell you, I was not laughing. No, I cried. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying because you are tired of seasons. One day you go better is nonsense. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. When you think about your children, you think about your life, your ministry, your destiny, then an indignation rises in your heart and you say, let God be true and all men liars. Let me speak over your life. For some of you, it is in this prayer that altars will finally be buried forever by the sea. It took sacrifice to build those altars. It is sacrifice that will destroy them. Some of you, the voices speaking against your destiny that will never allow you rise. It takes more than just casting out demons. Father, in the name of Jesus, here at Word Alive, we stand and I stand again in partnership with the grace of the man of God. For every one of you who is standing here, I command fire from heaven. And I pray, oh God, my God, who is also your God, the fire and the grace and the unction that shifts people to new seasons. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every power tying your finances, your spiritual life, repeating all seasons in your life. You change jobs, but the same seasons keep repeating. You change location, but the same seasons keep repeating. I bring those seasons to an end now in the name of Jesus. The same thing happened when you were in Lagos. The same thing happened when you were in Port Harcourt. The same thing happened when you were in London. The same thing happened when you were in US. Now that you are in Abuja, the same thing wants to happen. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name of Jesus, I bring tragedy to an end in your life. I bring shame and reproach to an end in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for your finances. Please help those under the anointing. Listen to me. There are three levels of wealth revealed from scripture. Number one, there is a level of wealth that has to do with exchanging your value and your time for rewards. Are we together now? Value that, is, that comes from transacting business. Number two, there is the second level of wealth that is as a product of transformation. You don't sell that value, you give it free. But the benefactors of that value are compelled to bless you, such as what ministers do. They don't sell the value, but then when people are transformed, they bless you. But there is a third dimension of wealth. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth by prophecy. That prophecy is able to create a climate of favor upon the life of a man. It was a prophet that said, by this time tomorrow. Let me speak over your finances. I stand by the grace of God. I stand as one helped by God Almighty. I stand in faith with your pastor. And I pray, if God be God, I give you three months from today. 90 days by prophecy. May your life shift in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, may that prophecy rest on your life. Let it go home with you. Let it go to your place of work with you. May this prophecy go to the market with you everywhere to go with you and it shall not fail till it comes to pass in the name of Jesus Christ everything in your yesterday that needs to come to an end right now by this sacrifice in the name of Jesus I end it now the shame of yesterday and now the pain of yesterday and now the tragedy of yesterday and now the lack of yesterday and now the bankruptcy of yesterday and now the coldness of yesterday and now and I speak you to a new season of victory I speak you to a new season of power I speak you to a new season of fire I speak you to a new season of abundance I speak you to a new season of speed. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.